I don't know who else is in the running, but Jason Chu has to be pretty high up there on the world's worst dad list. But murderers? No, he's not half bad. everyone. Terrence here with Hollywood Already Did It. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, share, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, ring that bell below. Anytime we have something, you will be among the first to know. The eighth episode, penultimate episode of uh, Dark Matter is here, and it's called Jupiter. A uh, very fitting title. We'll get there when we get there. If there was ever an episode to be called a Mind F, uh, I'm not going to curse, because not this early in the video, uh, this is the one. There is a lot that is thrown at you in this episode, and leaves me wondering if we're going to be able to close out everything in the final episode uh, that's coming up next. In Jupiter, the episode starts with Charlie uh, informing Jason Chu that Daniela has stepped out for a moment to go check on Ryan. <laughs> we know him as Ryan 3. They think that that's their Ryan. She goes to go check on Ryan because he just hasn't been sounding the best on the phone. Jason Chu says, okay. He goes out to take the trash out. <laughs> As he goes to take the trash out, he is attacked by let's the Jason numbering is going to get a little weird in this episode because we find out there's a bunch of them. But let's call him Jason Prime Three for now. He gets attacked by Jason Prime Three in the back alley. Uh, a scuffle ensues, and he he wins out and he kills him. Just bashes his head into the, the concrete sidewalk, and uh, yeah, he's dead. Where's Jason? Too. And he does, I'm going to be honest with you, he does look a little shaken by the fact that he has taken a life. I would say that as cold and callous as this Jason Chu is, he's a sociopath, I, I would say he has the, rem, the, the specifications of being that, but I, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to walk that back because I don't want to. I got in trouble last time uh, when I did the patient with labeling people. So I don't want to label, but he has the characteristics of being in that, that film. That realm. Um, but he does seem to have some genuine remorse for killing this Jason. Um, but he also probably has some fear because he's like, I don't know where these folks are coming from or how many of them there are. Daniela goes to go see Ryan, and Ryan 3 is in a bad way. He has no idea how he's here. He is both he has been both physically and mentally ripped from his world, and so he has no idea what is what. All he remembers is I was a mechanic, and the last time that I was somewhere, I was at a bar um, drinking. Daniela comes in, introduces herself. He doesn't remember her at all. He's like, the, in fact, all he knows her of is the Daniela that is coming to his mechanic shop to be a patron there. And she's like, well, that is all that you know of me? He's like, yeah. Um, they continue their conversation. He says the last thing that he remembers is getting sloshed and drunk at uh, a bar. Um, and meeting a person that he doesn't he doesn't know their name. So it's interesting in that world, Jason and Ryan were not close. So he was just seeing Jason out of the blue there. Um, and she, he tries to remember, like, it was either James or something like that. And she shows him a photo of Jason. And he's like, yeah, no, that was him. Who is he? And, and why, why, why is that important? Um, he then sort of passes out. And then Yella sends a photo of, Ra, of Jason to to uh, his girlfriend to say, hey, you see this person, keep him away just until I can figure some things out. This is where the episode gets nutty. <laughs> um, and uh, it, you start needing a notepad to keep track of all these Jasons. Jason Prime, our Jason, Jason Prime A, who we've been sort of following this whole time, Jason Prime 1, um, he gets a hotel. And he's trying to figure out what to sort of do next. He gets a hotel room. Um, he takes out the knife, tries to figure out what his plan of attack is going to be. Then he leaves his hotel room. As he leaves his hotel room, um, in the hotel corridor, he sees another Jason. Jason Prime 4, if you will. Um, <sighs> interesting, it's a cool shot to see them in a corridor of the hotel because it's sort of sim reminiscent to the corridor that they had in the box. And I know that they've all sort of been in a version of that for quite some time. Jason Prime goes to like exit. He's like, I need to, I need to get out of here. I need to leave. They make it on the street, and then Jason Prime, our Jason, Jason Prime One, is being chased by Jason Prime Four, um, and then sort of a chase ensues, and Jason Prime ends up 
at the village tap. That's the one safe haven that he knows he can have. He goes to kind of debrief and get a drink there. Jason Prime Ford does not follow him in. When he goes up to the bar, he's like, yeah, can I get a drink? And the bartender was like, wow, back so back so quickly. Something to that effect. Like basically saying that he was just here. Um, so much just here, in fact, that there is still one there. It's like the gold Goldilocks and the three bears. Like, and they're still here. Um, <laughs> he And he goes and he sees him. He goes to sit in the booth with Jason Prime 5. We'll give Jason Prime 5 that number. Jason Prime 1 and Jason Prime 5 sort of stare at each other and kind of have a mirroring of each other. Like the Spider-Man meme, they start doing things similarly. Um, you can tell by just the visual of uh, Jason Prime 5 that he has gone th- what his journey to get here is a little bit, a little bit rougher than what we've seen Jason Prime uh, 1 go through. He's got a gash. He's got a knitted hat on, but he's got a, sort of a scar that you can sort of see kind of protruding from the bottom of it. His path here is a little bit more rugged than, than what uh, they have. We realize that they both have similar experiences. They both have been kidnapped. They both have had their uh, the first world they've gone to, basically Jason Chu's world, Daniela shot. That is that has happened, and they both have tried to escape with Amanda, and they've gotten into the box. So my theory about sort of splintering off once um, Amanda was shot and Jason got in by himself, that is not what took place. What has taken place is they're saying that every time that Jason opened a door and made a decision, another Jason Prime sort of splintered off from that. And so um, every choice that he made created a different Jason Prime. Some of those took different paths. Some of those died. Some of those fell off. And some of those got to the point where they got lucky enough to make it back to this Prime world. And so what we're seeing is a lot of those Jason Primes, after doing their many different versions of whatever they path they've gone through, finally sort of converging in on this world. And so... Um, what has happened is like some split it off from that, and then those paths are split it off and just became sort of this vicious cycle of a bunch of Jasons that have been created. Not all coming back here. A lot of them have perished, but um, a great deal of them have made it back to this world. And it gets kind of creepy and kind of scary at the end of this one. Jason Prime 5 got back to that Chicago yesterday, the day before, and our Prime that we saw got there that, got there that night. Our Jason, Jason Prime, one uh, as five. Hey, what happened to your Amanda? And he says, I lost her. He kind of points to the scar that happened in his head. And he said, yeah, we, we, we lost her. Um, and then he asked him, what happened to yours? He's like, well, she found the life that she wanted to live in a world she wanted to live in. She chose to stay there. And you can see that for a moment, that Jason five has a moment of kind of joy for her. Um, it, it's clear that him losing Amanda, both having and wearing it physically and mentally, took a toll on him. So he got a bit of a joy to know that there's a world or a version of Amanda that did get to kind of go live the life that she wanted to live. Neither of them have ampules left, so this is sort of their world. Now, where I was correct on, and what I knew was going to be an issue, no matter what they do, these Jasons are going to have to make a decision. They're all going to be, they're all fighting for getting back with Daniela and getting Charlie back. Even they're all splits of the same version. That is their goal. There's only one that's the true prime, but they're all split off from that same version, so they all have that same goal. So there's a moment where Jason Prime 1 and Jason 5 are starting to think about an idea of what they can do to sort of remove Jason 2 off the board. And they're like, yeah, we can come up with a moment where there's a place that Charlie said we can go to that only we would know, Jason 2 wouldn't be aware of, that we can do that. Jason 2 says, but there is a problem. There's a bit of a conundrum. I want Danielle and Charlie too. And uh, I will immediately, the second that I see Jason too, I will murder him. I will kill him without hesitation. I don't want to harm any of us. I don't want to harm or hurt any of us, but I will do whatever it needs to be done to make sure that I am the one that ends up with Daniela and with Charlie. And it's fascinating because this is a bit of a conundrum with the show is that they all have a right at that stake. Like none of them are not Jason Prime. Like, they all are from that world. They're just all slightly different variations that have gone through a little bit more hell to get there. The one that we have followed is, like, the true, but there's not that much of a difference outside of what they have gone through within the corridors and within the box that has led them to not be Prime. So any of them can take the place because the history and the memory that they have is still the same as 
as as prime one, uh, which is kind of a fascinating sort of thing. We as an audience are rooting for Jason Prime one, but Jason Prime seven came around and looked and didn't have as many physical scars and uh, deformations and limps that we sort of see later. I don't know if it's such a bad thing. It's still a Jason Prime versus whatever the hell Jason Chu is doing. Uh, that's a little mind twist to sort of play around with uh, as an audience. Um, but Jason Prime brings up, it was like, until a month ago, we were all the exact same person. Um, we all have the exact same feelings and thoughts. And we can't all be Jason. So I think they start sort of questioning, how many do you think have made it back? And they go over their... It's like one tried to kill me yesterday, one was following me. We have seen as an audience one tried to kill Jason too. So there's at least three that have already four that are already present on the board besides our Jason Prime one and our Jason two. Who knows how many more have sort of splintered off and come off from these hellish worlds and so many variations. After Jason Prime five sort of makes a declaration saying, I don't want to hurt you, he then takes off. It's like, I'll pay for this, I'll take off, and he leaves. He um he left some matches there. And uh, some things sort of start ruminating in his brain. And then Jason Fi uh, Prime 1 watches Jason 5 go into a hotel directly across from where he's at. Basically kind of to watch him see that he's not going to affect anything else that he's doing. Jason 2 is trying to dispatch of the body of Jason Prime 3. Um, and he gets sort of interrupted by Charlie. Charlie's like, hey, yo, the pizza's here. You, uh, you want to come eat? And it's from Pequod's, which my folks in Chicago, if you haven't, well done. Uh, good, good, good throwaway there. I like that. Um, Jason, too, is kind of like, no, no, no. I got it. I'll do this by myself. Uh, I'll be right there. Um, but he's basically wrapping up and tarping up the body and kind of trying to find a way to dispose of it. As they get some sleep, or try to get some sleep, neither of them are actually sleeping. Um, that Jason is there ruminating over, like, what the heck? I just murdered a man. And two, how many more of these people, these Jasons are coming back? And two, Danielle is like, this isn't something's wrong. So neither of them are actually getting any rest. We flip over to Jason Prime 1, who is getting some sleep. It looks like in the middle of a park. He wakes up and decides to go cause mayhem. Um, very much different than what his actual character is. He is a good person, but he needs to go sort of cause a little ruckus because he has a, an idea of, of sort of to get the ball rolling. And so he goes to a diner, to get some food, and then he pulls out a cigar and lights it up in the middle of <laughs> The diner to start smoking. You can tell he coughs a little bit, so you can tell that his lungs are virgin. He's not used to doing this. This isn't his personality, but he needs to keep this going. The patrons of the diner are starting to say, hey, this is rude. What are you doing? You can't smoke in here. The, the, the waitress that he was just very kind to and gave a heavy tip to, um, he's, he's like, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to keep, I'm going to keep smoking. She goes to get her manager. It, it ensues. Um, he even asked the entire audience, like, yo, is this being rude to everybody? They're like, yes, it is. They're cool. And he keeps smoking. Um, so the police show up. Dawn, who was the ball breaker in Jason Chu's world, she she is a police officer here in this world. So uh, no matter what, she still gets to be the aggressor, <laughs> um, no matter what world she's in. And they haul him off to jail. Jason Chu is continuing his routine of vigorously cleaning those teeth, uh, flossing. And he, I will say this one thing. He's going to keep that teeth clean, no matter how many people he murders or how terrible of a father it is. Those teeth are going to stay clean. Um, but Daniela comes up to him and says, hey, I need to take the Civic to go do some errands. And he's like, no, 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 don't take the Civic. Take Charlie's car. And she's like, well, why? He's like, just take the Civic. He's pretty, being pretty dismissive of it. We, as an audience, know, ding, ding, ding. That's where he's keeping the dead body because he needs to transfer that and get rid of that in some form or fashion. So that's where the body is. So that is why he's pushing her towards that car. He has forgotten something, though. He takes Charlie, and he's planning to go take him and just drop him off at school, but completely forgetting that he has promised Charlie that he uh, is going to take him on a tour of the Chicago campus. Crap. He's like, all right, well, no, if that's what I promised you, then this is what we're going to go do. So he turns it around and goes to that. Uh, that dead body can wait. It's fine. Um, they arrive at the campus and they start just touring things and looking at things, just reminiscing. And Jason Chu tells Charlie, like, hey, that's the building that I did physics in. And I went to a party that I would have, I almost didn't go to. And I would have been the biggest regret, mistake of my life if I did not go to that party. It's at this point that Charlie sort of has, has a teen angsty outburst. He basically calls him pretty ignorant. He's like, your whole life hinged on a freak accident. Um, 
And you've told me before, the previous Jason has told him before that there's nothing as regrets. And so that doesn't make it, doesn't line up with the, 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 the stuff you've taught me all my life. Um, I will say this, so it's interesting. <clears throat> that freak accident caused you to be here, Charlie. So I think you might want to calm down a little bit. But it's clear that in this, Jason Chu has no real way to converse or to calm or to speak to his son because he hasn't had any type of relationship with him up to this point. And so he doesn't really know how to combat that sort of response from his son. Plus, there's another Jason Prime running around the campus that's following them. Um, this one appears to be in a lot worse way than the others. We'll call him Jason Prime 6 for now. Um, Jason Prime 6 has a scarred face and he's walking around with a limp. So whatever worlds he's been to, none of us want to be there. Um, and so the the tour starts to become a little bit more rushed. Jason 2 is trying to rush through things, get through security, kind of go through things, and keeps keeping an eye on where Jason Prime 6 is at. To the point where he eventually tells Charlie, like, hey, Charlie, I need you to go to get the car. Go get the car, bring it around to this point. And Charlie's like, I don't have a license. Like, what are you talking about? I don't even have a permit. I can't go. It's like, just take the car, go to those locations, repeat it back to me. Cool, you got it. Go. I trust you. Get out here and go. He sends him off, and then he starts scurrying around the, the campus as Jason Prime 6 begins to follow him, and the, the chase ensues even more. And so they're meeting, they're running through libraries and corridors to eventually they meet in a bathroom. And another battle between the Jasons occurs. So Jason 2 and Jason Prime 6 get into a scuffle. Once again, Jason 2 comes off the victor and he kills another Jason Prime. Uh, and then he hides the body so that it's not seen right away. If somebody was to just come in there, gives him a little time to escape from the, the campus. Um, he takes the knife, so he now has a knife from Jason Prime and he locks the door from the outside so that it looks like he died on the inside of that part. Um, he then runs and, and catches up with Charlie, who has gotten himself uh, pulled over by the police. Well, actually stopped by the police. He had already parked um, there, and the police come to pull him over. They start asking for his registration and the license, and Jason, too, comes quickly and says, hey, nope, this is on me. My bad. We were showing him a tour. I told him to just stay in the car and park it here. He's like, you can't park it. Like, All right, that's my bad. The, the police let him off without a warning. Um, must be nice. Um, Jason Drew gets in the car and just says, drive. Let's just go. Let's get the hell up out of here. So they do. While this is happening, Daniela is going to the storage facility that Jason Chu has. Um, and she is using some bolt cutters to get in there and, and get in some more information. Now, I really <laughs> wish it wasn't so easy to just break into somebody's storage facility. Um, seems like this place is, does not have cameras or any type of security. But okay. The story says that's where we got to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it fly. She gets in there and she sees uh, money. Not from this world. It looks like it has different presidential faces on 20s. So it's from a different era. Um, probably from his world. And he realized that he can't spend it here. So he sort of has just kept it present here. And then go back. If he ever needs to go back, he can spend it there. Um, some ampules are there. And then there's a camera that has a lot of photos of her. Charlie and Jason, like just a bunch of photos on there. She doesn't quite know what that means yet, but that's all there. She then gets a call that sort of pulls her away from being able to sort of get any more information there. And where she gets pulled to, she gets pulled to prison and she is bailing Jason Prime one out of jail. Smartly, Jason Prime has sort of thought of a way to get one on one with Daniela Prime without any other eyes or ears and sort of just be the two of them. So he can tell her what exactly is going on. And Daniela is ready to read him the riot act. She doesn't quite understand what was going on in that storage facility, but she's like, I don't like it and I don't trust you. There are lies upon lies upon lies. So I don't believe you. And this Jason's like, I don't know what that man is telling you, but I'm telling you this here now. The last time that I actually laid eyes on you was when I went off to Ryan's party at the village tap. I have not seen you since. And the person that is there now is a, uh, it's a copy. It's a copy of me. I'm not going to lie. Yes, that's the facts. Yes, that's the truth. That is a very, that's a lot of information that just seems implausible to just throw on somebody and expect them to believe it. Like Jason, as smart as you are, you probably could have come at this a bit of a different angle, but at least he has a way to sort of help prove that. He says, call me, call me right now and uh, see if I pick up. 
Because if I'm standing here now, you call the other one and you hear my voice, then you should know I'm not telling you a lie. She does. And then hangs up. And she hears the voice of Jason on the other side, Jason too. He then says, here's what I want you to do. Call him back and say, hey, that place that we visited, the Keys last year for Christmas, I want to go back there. And she's like, well, we didn't go to a, a Keys vacation last year. She's like, I know that. And you know that. He doesn't know that. She's like, okay. So he calls right back. He's like, hey, I think we got disconnected. And she says, hey, I really like to go to that vacation home in the Keys again. And she's like, yeah, that'd be nice. Like the White House that we went to. She's like, yeah, I really like that house. So she puts on, she puts a little extra seasoning on the lie that she, that Jason Prime One told her to tell and uh, realized that, yeah, he's this person that's here isn't who they say they are. And she's completely, it is not anything, especially an artist, that is not anything that she's, Hearing or seeing that makes sense, but it does make sense on an underlying layer that, like, I, this is why I don't, I haven't felt that you have been the person that I, I, I fell in love with. Why the Ryan things are starting to make sense, but just seems so implausible. That she's kind of just in a dazed state so at that point. That she's like, I got to get Charlie up out of there. Like he's not safe. I need to go get Charlie. And Jason Prime One says, Yeah, go do that, and let's meet back up. And he, she says, well, where do you want to meet? He's like, I can't pick the place because if I do, there's a good chance that other Jasons are going to realize where you're at because we all think alike. She's like, let's meet at the Bean. Chicago Bean, for those of you who haven't, it's a fun little tourist thing there. It's gorgeous. And she says, okay. And he's like, well, we also need a safe word because you're going to probably, there's, there's more than just Jason 2 and I out there. There's other versions of me. So you and I should have a safe word. And she says, Jupiter. Jupiter is a safe word. And he's like, okay. And then she goes off to go get a hold of Charlie. She does tell him that I am not saying that I'll come. Um, but I think the motion, she feels the most safe. And it feels like she realizes that this is the person that she has the most connection with. Like with all the other, with the other Jason that she's seen, something felt cold where this one, she is getting some of the feelings that she had from him. Um, but she definitely tells him like, I'm not saying I'm coming back. So Daniela arrives at home and she sort of pulls a, she originally parks a little farther away. It's like, hey, I need you to come to the back alley. And she types up a message. Then she deletes it and decides to go in to get Charlie herself because she doesn't quite know where Charlie is in respect to where Jason 2 is. And so if something quickly happens, it may set off an alarm for, for Jason 2. She goes in uh, and she's kind of looking for where they're at. She doesn't see Charlie immediately, but she finds Jason Chu in their bedroom, packing feverishly, like looking like a madman, just throwing stuff in the suitcase, like, yeah, we got to go. We're in trouble. I'll tell you all about it later, but we have to get up out of here. And Daniela's like, well, where's Charlie? And she's like, told him to go get a suitcase. <clears throat> He's going to start packing himself now. You need to go get a bag, too. He's like, okay, but why? And he gets a little bit more forceful and a little bit more aggressive and starts yelling at Daniela. And Daniela's like, all right, cool. I will go do that. So for the first time for her to see that her Jason has never spoken to her in that manner before. And so this does sort of reinforce all the things that she has seen. This does reinforce that this isn't the Charlie. I mean, this isn't the Jason that she, she should be with. She goes into Charlie's room, takes out the earbuds, is about to start telling him, like, we need to get up out of here. But then Jason, uh, too, comes around the corner and says, hey, I apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to yell, can you go get your bag? And she's like, yeah, I can go do that. She goes downstairs and she's preparing to type. She's typing a big message to Charlie that says, in caps, we're in danger. We need to get up out of here. She sends it, but the phone is downstairs with them. And then Jason Chu and Charlie start converging in on where she's at. She's still not getting the bag yet, by the way, which sort of sets off a, a flag for, for Jason Chu. Luckily, she gets the phone and hands it to Charlie first before Jason 2 can hand it to her. So she sends Charlie out to the car. Like, go get in the car. I'll be right there. Um, Daniela says, I gotta go get my bag. She's like, it's in the basement. She opens the door. She's like, hey, can you help me reach it? And he's like, yeah, sure. So he goes down in front of her, and then she pushes him down the stairs. This family will turn to murder and damaging very quickly. And I love it. For protection of your, your, your loved one, I would do the same. But throws him down the steps. He's down there in a, in a crumpled heap. She then locks the door so that he can't get out from the outside. There's a chair there on the side, too, that she doesn't 
usually what they do, they just prop the, the door too, so it's not as easy. He's eventually going to bust out of there, but it that just would have bought them a little bit more time. But whatever. She heads out, gets in the car with Charlie, and is like, we got to go. We got to get, get the hell out of there. Now, at this point, Charlie has no idea what's happening. Uh, he is just an uh, innocent bystander getting pulled away. And so Danielle and them floor it, make it out the alley. And as they make it out the alley, um, they are barricaded by a car uh, with a Jason Prime in it. I'm going to stop giving them numbers, but there's a Jason Prime in the, in the car. And he's like, come on, get out the car. We got to go. We got to go. Daniela, possibly some of it because she just got out of an, out of an accident, but also because she's in a, in a rush to get away from Jason Chu, doesn't quite assess the situation. But she takes Charlie and says that that's what my Jason was, was wearing. I'm going to get in it. Now, you, us as an audience, we can sort of see that this Jason doesn't still have quite the same markings on his face that the Jason that she just saw had. Um, and so it's not a one-to-one. -one. We know that's not the Jason that she should be getting in the car with. She does. Gets in the car, starts pulling off, and as they are in the car driving, this Jason starts to repeat the things that the Jason Prime 1 said in regards to, hey, I haven't laid eyes on you since the village type, so on and so forth, and then they immediately realize, like, oh, crap. <sighs> he said there were going to be a bunch of you. This isn't one. She sees that the the car has been hot wired with a screwdriver. She's like, this isn't a safe situation. I need to get out. She's like, stop the car, stop the car. And he's like, what are you talking about? Then they get T-boned. And you guessed it, they get T-boned by another Jason uh, who is coming to get them. It's fascinating to me that these Jasons are so willing to, I need to be with Daniela, I need to be with Daniela and Charlie, that they're willing to put them in some dangerous situations to get them back. Because T-boning them could have ended in a terrible situation. Neither here nor there. Um, they get out the car and these, neither of the Jasons that are in the two cars that have been in the wreck can get out. Their airbags have deployed and they're sort of pinned in at the door. Like that's where the damage is taking place. So they can't leave. So Charlie and Danielle are e easily able to escape and leave. And they, they start sprinting. We then see a shot of, uh, the Chicago bean. Like I said, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, and Jason prime one is there. He's waiting. And then all of a sudden Daniela. And Charlie walk up to him um, and he starts sort of smiling. And I was like, before we do anything, what's the word? And he, re he recites it, Jupiter. Uh, and then she sort of eases up and lets him go hug Charlie because she knows that, yeah, we've seen each other, but you haven't seen your son. And so, yes, you should have that moment. Mind you, Charlie has no idea what the hell has happened. He's just seen about five versions of Jason right now. So he is completely uh, <laughs> confused about what's going on. But then we go to black. And that is the episode. A very powerful episode, a, a really good penultimate episode, like Jason's upon Jason's upon Jason's upon Jason. Um, what I thought was the reason this Jason split, these Jason split wasn't quite the reason. Um, but I did catch on that these folks were all going to want to go after Daniela. Like they all had the same objective. And so now we don't have, we have no idea how many more Jasons there are in this world. Jason Chu. I don't think is dead, probably just in a coma or just knocked out for a little bit. He's still on the board. And there are a lot of Jasons that are ending up dead. So I don't know how this all sort of gets tied up. There's a Ryan three who has no idea where he's from. Um, I'm imagining Layton's are going to come back into play at some point, but there's a lot sort of riding and kind of converging in on this final episode. But at the very least, we now have a world where, Jason Prime 1, Daniela Prime, and Charlie Prime have now reconnected. And now it's a matter of, uh, and now it's a matter of them flushing out the rest of the world so that it is just them and all the other Jasons that have sort of split are no longer present. I don't know how that happens unless they just send Jason 2 off to be a murderous Jason Prime uh, assassin for the rest of this, the episode. Um, but I'm in. I'm in. I'm glad that we it is sort of a relief to sort of have Jason Prime sort of get his objective and get back with Daniela and Charlie. But now there is so much tension still on the rest of the world and what they, these guys have to do with everybody now trying to sort of take that Jason Prime one off the board because all these other Jason Primes want what he's got. What did you guys think about this episode? Go ahead and leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. Uh, if you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at HollywoodABI. You can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDidIt at gmail.com. 
We also have a podcast with the same name. That's on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that plays podcasts. We're there. And like always, I got my ticket. You got yours.